What's up, Internet? We recently published a video where we tried to make it as easy as possible to choose a GPU for a mid-range gaming rig, pang 1080p gaming. The point of that video was to show that, really, it's not so hard to pick a GPU. It's a trap! Well, buckle up, folks, because in this video, we're gonna be talking about how that earlier video, yung it's easy to choose a GPU video, isn't that great a guide to actually choosing a GPU. Sawa ka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may CDK ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sudden depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Number one, that first video had no prices. And prices are super important, essential to determining cost for value. Because yes, GPUs can be faster than, let's say, our baseline 3060. But you want to know, is it good price to performance? Are you paying a lot just for a very small increase in performance? Hindi yun sulit. And di natin masabi yun just based on the raw performance. Kung baga kulang yung data na tininan natin in the first video. A not great card might become great if you can get it at a good price. For example, yung 3060 Ti at 3070 magkalapit lang in terms of performance. Yes, the 3070 is slightly faster, but if on a budget, okay nin 3060 Ti. But if you can get the 3070 at a good price, let's say second hand or my clearance sale, whatever reason, of course go for the 3070. It is faster than the 3060 Ti. But all things being equal, if you're shopping at regular rates, the 3060 Ti comes out ahead for cost to performance. But you can only compare that if you have the prices which we didn't tackle in the first video. Because to be fair, I have no idea what the prices are for your market. If you're watching in the Philippines, if you're watching elsewhere, if you're looking at the primary market or the secondhand market, there are always deals to be had. And the problem with looking at just the raw performance numbers is that you completely miss the price to performance part of the equation, which is actually a big part in determining what GPU is best for you. Now, of course, GPUs are inanimate things, so they don't become smarter as they get older and di sila nadadagdaga ng VRAM. Essentially, their performance should stay the same since they're not like people. They don't grow up, they don't learn more things. But while they are hardware, and immutable, what can change about them is the software, which can actually improve their performance by a lot. We're either talking about the drivers or we're talking about the games themselves. These things are easily updatable and the updates do give a big boost in performance. So if you take a look at a test done in 2020 versus a test done in 2022, depending on the GPU, the drivers, and the game, you could be seeing a massive jump in performance. The hardware has not changed, it's still the same GPU, but the software running on it has changed and that can be a big deal. That's something else we didn't tackle in the first video. And to be fair, we didn't tackle it because it's quite hard to determine what drivers are being used. And if a game has been updated to become more optimized, to run faster on the same hardware. Not as critical as knowing the price, but when you buy a GPU, you should be aware or you can do research to determine if the games that you want to play have been optimized some more after their launch or specific drivers came out covering them. And performance does improve if the software running on the hardware has been optimized. There's an old saying, sausages are great but don't ask how sausages are made. 
because basically sausages are the part of the animal that nobody wanted. They mix that, cut them, dice them, shred them, stuff them all together into one casing. Masarap nga yung lungganisa, pero wag mo na tanungin paano na buo yung lungganisa. And that kind of applies to GPU benchmarking. The numbers look pristine, clinical, accurate, objective. But what went into the making of the numbers, the story behind them, can have a lot of twists and turns. What resolution is the game playing on? Is RTX on? Is DLSS on? What texture quality is on? Again, going back to software, has the game been updated? So many other variables go into the making of the benchmarks. So when everything is boiled down to just one number, kumbaga yung sausage, the sausage looks good, but you don't quite know all of the details, and it's hard to compare details between the different numbers that are being displayed. Yes, in one game you got X FPS compared to another game where you got Y FPS, but again, there were so many settings, there's a wide gulf between those two games, that even just comparing those two numbers doesn't tell the whole story. And the story, kumbaga yung context or yung settings na ginamit mo to arrive at that benchmark is important to give an accurate picture of the differences of performance between the GPUs. And even the numbers themselves, there can be a wide range between the numbers. In the first video, I really tried to make it na this card is 20% faster than the 3060, for example. But to arrive at that 20%, ang lawak ng gulf. It might have been more accurate to say between 15 and 25%, and that's a big difference. Instead of 20, so in some games, actually, you're expecting 20% gain, but you're only getting 15. In some games, you'll actually get more, you'll get 25. And again, that's just the range. There could be outlier games based on outlier settings. Some games are just better optimized. So even when it appears accurate, when everything is boiled down to just one number, there's a lot of number crunching there. Which again, the user benefits from drilling down, looking at more granular data, so you can appreciate the actual measurement rather than just the average of how many FPS in one game compared to the average FPS of another game. The range matters. And we can't explore that range if we give a super simplified explanation which boils down to one number. Last reason why the last video wasn't so great is because it didn't have your input. Thank you! Yes, you watching this video. Because what you play or what you might use the GPU for is very different from how I might be using it, the games that I might be playing. Depending on the games that you play, you might not need a very fast GPU. And that's not something captured in the last video. So what if a 3070 is roughly 30% faster than a 3060 when you don't need that extra speed? Sayang lang pera mo. Because at a certain point, yes, it sounds great that you can run a game at 160 FPS at 1080p. But realistically, 100, 120 would be good enough and you might want to slide down to a lower-end GPU if you can already meet the frame rate of the games that you usually play. You can save yourself some money, spend it on other hardware, or heck, even spend it on more games. What you consider acceptable in terms of frame rate and graphics quality is different from what I would consider acceptable. So it's a very personalized choice. Just how much performance do you really need and how much do you want to pay for that performance? Hindi naman lahat tayo mga milyonaryo na 4090 yung gusto nila, kailangan 4K gaming sa Cyberpunk, ray tracing on, overpath on, everything on. Very few gamers are like that. We play the games that we like to play and we should only buy the hardware that we need to play those games. But the X Factor are what games you play. <laughs> And it's hard to give a general ballpark figure na, yeah, well, kung maganda siya sa Warzone, then maganda siya sa Dota 2. Yes, that is true, but a GPU that can handle Warzone is probably overkill for something like Dota 2. Again, what you like, what settings you put it on, really matters in your choices. Yung maganda sa first video, sobrang simple lang niya. There was one number, it sounds very objective because it's a number, Kitang kita at a glance which GPUs are faster. But this part 2 can provide a lot more context, insight, background to determine which GPU is really the best for your gaming rig. 
people just want to be told what's the best and that's the first video but what's best depends on you what games do you play what's your budget what settings do you like to play on what resolution do you use what settings do you like what's the overall purpose of your rig that's what i hope this part two was able to emphasize at the end of the day whatever gpu you get you're getting it so you can play games not to obsess over frame rates price to performance not to rant about how one brand just cares about profits rather than its consumers so after two videos my advice really just boils down to one sentence pick a gpu then have fun Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron kami. Full service PC store ang hardware sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up to date yung inventory dun. Kung in stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.